just over 10 miles in. One hour, 10 minutes of riding time. 1,387 feet of climbing. Pretty chill. And everyone's being pretty sensible at the moment. It's pretty awesome. Marathon 5, 15.7 miles. 2,000 feet of climbing. It's going good. About 105 miles in, hiking up Coco Claims. Pretty, uh, pretty punchy this one. Mike and I have been hiking up Coco Claims. We've got snow, thought of the top, and then we saw that. Let's get it done. Do it. Little status update, day one, Tour Divide, it's quarter past 10, 122 miles in, 10,741 feet of climbing. And I'm with Jason and Mike. This is the Tour Divide. So day two of the Tour Divide, 77 miles in, uh, 6,100 feet elevation. Pretty, uh, pretty tough day yesterday, really, really interesting pass. Um, gonna press on a little bit, ready for uh, another big pass first thing tomorrow morning. Lots of snow. So uh, yeah, watch this space. Hundred and six miles. Just coming up to the campsite. It's been a good day, but a tough day. Character building with jackets. Morning three. Oh boy. Hey Mike, what's uh where are we? We're at the wall. Alright. Why is yeah. why is it called the wall? Uh it's pretty much straight up, kinda uh, like the wall. I see. <laughs> Day three on the Tour Divide. Just come through Eureka at the border. Currently about 55 miles in. Crazy snow pass this morning. So yeah, going all right. Day four, Tour Divide. Another pass, more snow, and it's character building. I'm having an amazing time. <sighs> this is the summit. I think of Red, Red Meadow Pass. This is Red Meadow Lake. Yeah. 
day five. It's all divide. Left, uh, left big fork this morning. Um, weather conditions pretty bad. So uh, just taking a gentle ride up to Condon, I think it is. About 60 miles or so, all uphill. The music I've got playing at the moment is quite apt. Everywhere you go, always take the weather with you. Everywhere you go. Yeah, seems quite fitting, really. So whoever's idea that was, thank you very much. Catch you later. Well, it's still raining and I'm still going up the first pass. No snow yet. It's hovering between zero and minus one. And all is good. Confident in my kit. Thank you for work for sponsoring this ordeal in the form of nitrile gloves to uh, form a bit of a barrier from the rain. I don't know if you can see that. Got some proper waterproof gloves in my bag, but I'm keeping those dry for the Richmond Pass. So yeah, all is good. I'm dry on the inside, not on the outside. And uh, yeah, surprisingly, morale is high, even though all of that is soggy. Yeah. Catch you guys later on for a bit of an update. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I think I've got about a thousand foot up to go. Elevation and then it's down the other side. So fingers crossed. Okay, quick status update. Probably can't see me. Uh, okay, uh, thinking at the summit, uh, it's minus four. Uh, kit is just okay without having to get my, my other stuff out. Open my bag, keep that dry. But yeah, now for the very cold descent. One or two other riders in front. Ooh. Ooh. Hello. So, huh. if you'd like to know the temperature limit of my kit, I think it's about minus two on a sustained basis, because it is minus two, 52 miles in, 5,000 feet of elevation. Um, I'm wet, I'm cold, but uh, it's okay, because it will finish. And then I'm gonna moan because it's gonna be too hot. So uh, yeah, day five, tour divide. So I made it to some accommodation. Check out the bike storage. A couple of other riders here as well. Yeah. Morning, day six, tour divide. The weather has passed, so that can only mean one thing. Up and over the mountain we go. Um, <clears throat> reports from one person that tried it yesterday. She said it was about three and a half foot of snow and she was only very small and she still hadn't got to the top and we've had more snow since. So. I think it's going to be a bit of a tough old push, but hopefully we'll get over it today and then into uh, Lavando 
and then from Evando up another pass and then onto Lincoln. So watch this space. Nice morning. And I'm assuming Richmond Peak is one of those two in front of me. So somehow I have to get up and over that and through the snow and down the other side. What could possibly go wrong? But yeah. Super nice. <laughs> the song that's just come on on the, um, on the playlist. This could be the day that I die. This could be the day that I die. How fitting. That'd be fun. Let's go, everyone. One of a few bear encounters. There's one just up ahead. He's just gone into the trees. Black bear. It's pretty cute, but I won't give him or her a cuddle. I'll just give it a few minutes. Arm. This spray. Still going up Richmond Peak. I'm about four hours, I think, in, of which, <clears throat> excuse me, about two and a half of that is starting from Holland Lake, where some people stayed yesterday. Just started getting the snow, and uh, I just can't, I can't get how this goes up and over. But we will find out because we will be going over today. All is all right. Ah, not a bad view, I suppose. Right, let's see where I'm going. I reckon this way. Yeah. Still not quite at the summit, but shouldn't be too much longer. The snow is, uh, yeah, the snow's getting deep. Just thank you to the guys that, that stayed at Holland Lodge last night that's punched this hole through the snow. <clears throat> Tough going. Respect. Oh. It's rather really nice, isn't it? Made it to the other side. Woohoo! The world's a better place with some sunshine. <laughs> oh, yes. Amazing, what a difference. Just a day of boring. Tour divide, day six. Still going. 115.4 miles in, just cruising into uh, into Lincoln, where there's hope of some grass and a camp spot. All good so far, big day. Downtown Lincoln. <laughs> so 
So this is what they call the llama ranch. Cyclists, welcome. Awesome place. Bit of a contrast in scenery and weather from the last few days. It's very nice. Bit of a headwind. Bit of a warm one today. Um, <clears throat> pushed on this morning. Eventually got to uh, Helena and uh, got there at about I think two o'clock, if memory serves. Um, had a joyous Burger King. Not. A um, couple of sort of delays in town, just with trying to find a shop and said it was a shop and then it was actually a sweet shop um, not that's a bad thing but all I wanted was some fruit and vegetables which I failed on so instead I have more frozen burrito wraps and we're just heading up a 20 kilometer uh, road which at the moment is good gravel and that will take us to the top of the summit and bring us into Butte, which is a tiny town with one shop and no accommodation. So some decisions to be made in terms of where to stop. Currently on about 81 miles. Would like to get to 100, but the reality is that's probably going to put me right in the centre of Butte. So we will see. Could be a late one tonight again. Catch you later. It's five past nine. <sighs> up another pass. Trying to get up and over down to the bottom. Big day. Big eating. <sighs> this has been a slog. This has been a slog. What do you reckon? A slog? Slog. Slog. Slug for the bears. Another late one tonight. Over a big pass, really big pass. Kind of uh, really wanted to get over because it's been really hot today. But yeah, it's 20 past 10. Been riding for over 12 hours. Been going since six with a few hours break through the day. 103 miles, 10,500 feet elevation. And oh my word, they were tough. Thank you.
another iconic landscape coming up. Cycling out of Butte, 50 miles in, boiling hot, 34 degrees. And um, it was about a 35 mile an hour headwind. But look at this. How cool is that? This is the last borderline rideable part of Fleecer Ridge. The rest of it was uh, pushing your bike down. Well done. Very good. Yes. Eight hours. So, um, hundred and uh, hundred and ten miles in. It's been a headwind all day and climbing all day. About another 45 miles to go. It's going to be a late one. Bye. 7,400 and something feet into a headwind all day long to get up here. Almost at the summit. Almost at the summit. Tour divide, proving it has teeth. Very much so. Catch you later on. Morning of day 10, camped in, the, uh, in a gorge last night, couldn't quite make it into town uh, before midnight, so we're uh, just heading into a pretty big town now called Lima, not pronounced Lima, Lima. So just had breakfast in Lima, Tour Divide, day 10, feeling good. Less headwind at the moment.
So the headwind is back, but on the plus side, the gravel is much smoother. into Idaho. Uh, been greeted by the summit trying to uh, avoid the uh, thunderstorm. It's on its way and it's chasing it. Fortified, day 11. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Mm, not so pretty. Check this out. Still going up. Still going up. Tough day 11, really tough, no reason why, the ground conditions were pretty wet, pretty cold, at minus one, minus two, um, managed to do 103 miles and just finished in um, Holter Bay campsite at half past six, it's a really really early finish, um, but just in time when the rain started, so I um, managed to keep all the kit dry, so winner end of day 11 so it's the morning of day 12 tour divide stayed at Colter Bay campground last night which is really nice some noisy people next to us but they shut up eventually we managed to get some really good sleep and um, <clears throat> gonna try and get to Pinedale today which is about 110, 120 miles away with a couple of really big uh, eight and a half or 9,000 foot 
uh, climbs to do today as well. So tough day, but so far weather looks good. Minus three at the moment, and um, yeah, sun is shining. Okay, it's really Not a bad view this morning. Grand Titans. Over 9,000 feet up, just past the Continental Divide. Woohoo! So, Anthony and I have decided if there's somewhere you need to do hike a bike probably where you choose and what you choose to do it on. It's pretty nice. Agreed? He's agreed. Not a bad view. Worth it given the uh, the claggy mud we had on the way up here. Most of it's off now, but you can see the, the fun. Yeah. Guys, so what? What is going on here? Hike a bike. Nine thousand foot. It's no joke. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty hard to breathe if you push hard. Check this out. How cool is that? Coming up to the end of day 12, 117 miles in, another 20 I think to go, starting to pick the pace up a bit now, conditions are better and uh, starts to feel good, body's adjusting and uh, here we go. Probably 1002 or 1003. 100 miles in, Tour Divide, and we have a race on at 9 o'clock at night to see who can get to Pinedale first. We've been switching positions back and forth, but uh, yeah, the girl out front, she is strong. She is very strong. Here we go. So here we go, another day, another bike ride. 
Stayed in Pinedale last night, had a big day, about 142 miles I think in the end, with just under 9,000 feet of elevation gain. So it's quite a tough day, but I think the body's adjusting. Um, so got a reasonably good start from Pinedale this morning, just going to Atlantic City, um, which is about 85, 90 miles away bit of a tactical strategy uh, plan on this one because after Atlantic City is the Great Basin and I think it's about 120 to 130 miles without any reliable water sources so a bit of a rest up in Atlantic City and then look at the weather forecast with regards to wind and uh, potentially it might be a midnight or a 2 or 3 a.m. start to avoid the uh, the headwind potential. So watch this space. It's getting warm. Approaching the Great Basin. It's going to be tonight. Already hours to my morning's activity. This is a warm up. Day 14, toured ride, just uh, left from Wild Bill's uh, cabins, amazing place to stay, really hospitable, even got a hot tub. Um, had a big breakfast, so a slightly later start, but now entering the Great Basin, 130 miles of nothing, absolutely nothing. Here we go. Well, the Great Basin is living up to its name. It's pretty great. Should I say grand? Absolutely nothing. views so we left the weather forecast said there's about a 20 percent chance of rain and thunderstorms looks like it might be a bit more than that I think I'm just coming out of the basin. Note to self, don't do that again. It was tough. 
that was tough mixture of terrain and then had about 20 25 miles of a headwind and a storm up to my right didn't get too wet quite lucky really but um, a little bit under what my estimate was at 130 miles just coming up to about 96 um, eight hours ride time and uh, just under 4,000 feet climbing so um yeah added up a bit catch you later on wham sutter Sutter. Trying to avoid that. I'm chasing us all day. So, end of day 14, across the Great Basin. Pretty uneventful apart from the last 25 miles of, of headwind and storm dodging, but yeah, carried on a little bit past Wam Sutter and um, about 135 miles in and found a bridge. Some crows on a very mucky bike. And that is accommodation for the night. End of day 14 campsite. Um, under a bridge in the middle of nowhere. Pretty cool. Another day, approaching the Colorado border, another thunderstorm on the horizon. Looks like a big one. Oh joy. I've left Brush Mountain Lodge, met the lovely Kirsten, uh, narrowly avoided the peanut butter uh, mud on the way out as a short rainfall, that's okay, and uh, yeah, now heading to the pass and uh, Clark County store. Roughly 9,200 feet up. Past a little bit of snow, but approaching the summit now. It's very nice. Very nice. So, still going up Boreas Pass. Look at that for a view. Better not go off the edge though. Woo. Apparently, a train used to come up here. So, it's been a steady. I don't know. 3% incline the whole way up, like a long way up, but yeah, it's a, it's a high one this one, and look at that, oh, oh, do, do, do. road's not great though. Oh. Dear Santa, Please, 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 can I have one of these for Christmas? Just one, just one for Christmas. Thank you. It's cold now. Very cold. Just going over Boreas Pass.
What do you reckon, Phil? A bit soggy. What a difference a day makes. What a difference three hours makes. Yeah. I was on such a high when we came over <laughs> Boreas Pass because I got over the top. I was house shopping with them. <laughs> and then, well, check out yeah. this. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Another day, I think it's day 17 or 18, I can't remember. Leaving the town of Hartzell. Interesting town for sure. Very interesting town. Leaving the town of Salida. Very cool place. Actually, it's not cool at all, it's boiling. Still climbing up Marshall Pass. This is a pretty nice campsite, campground down there. And uh, yeah, it's a high peak, this one. I think it's just just shy of 11,000 feet. And there's another thunderstorm. Brilliant. Got to the top of Marshall Pass, on the way down, and look. Looks like it's gonna rain. What do you reckon? It's been looking like it's gonna rain for about <laughs> two hours. Here we go. It's gonna rain or something. Sergeants. Morning of day something or other. Um, I think I've got about 700 ish miles to go. Um, a bit concerned. I'm on my last set of brake pads. If the weather stays dry, it should be fine. If the weather doesn't, I'm stuffed. Can't get spare brake pads because they're exotic, because they're English. I bought six sets out. When I was in Canada or some of the more wetter sections, I was getting through them in a day and a half, two days for a set, which is obviously unprecedented. So, um, yeah, not quite sure what to do. I'll have to run them literally metal to metal, I will, but even that, I don't think that'll get me the, the distance I need to get. So, we will see. No, no real bike shop options now um, to the end. So, watch this space. Fingers crossed. You gonna come home with me? Oh, you're cute. Oh, sorry. On the way from Sergeants to Del Norte. Ugh, tired today. Legs have got no energy. Slept at 9,000 feet. Climbed up over 10,500 feet. And now I'm going down a hill to climb back up again. It's not raining. Just come down off the pass, heading to Del Norte, and uh, check this out. Different landscape again. It's cool. This is not cool. Oh, 
نروح Good morning, and it is a morning, just after half past five, half past four alarm set this morning, got to go climb a big mountain, the Indiana Pass, it's the highest pass of the trip of just under 12,000 feet, and there's thunderstorms forecast this afternoon which could be a bit dangerous, so setting off early to hopefully get up and over, and uh, see where we go. Can't see the mountain yet, it's behind all this stuff, but nice start to the day. And for the moment, it remains cool. So you join me again, Brody Gap, Indiana Pass. Not even a quarter of the way up yet, but look at those views. <coughs> and for Phil Glasgow, or Fat Buck Phil, doing everything you taught me in our bike packing adventures in Spain. Sit in a gear, relax, and just twiddle, twiddle, twiddle up the hill. That's all we got to do. So thank you for that advice because I'm enjoying it and it's working well. Catch you guys later on. So I think I'm at the top of Indiana Pass. You can see that, that's been the climb this morning from Del Norte up to Indiana Pass and then it looks like we stay on here up and down for a bit and then slowly start going down so yeah nice, uh, nice views it's very quiet So it's very difficult to give you any kind of motivational one note when I don't actually know when you're going to be listening to this or what you're going to be up to. Going up feeling, a big pass, cetera, Em. Cetera. So feeling if you're low. Feeling low. Just yes. keep pedalling. Okay. There'll be a nice view around the corner or over the next mountain pass or down the next hill. If you're feeling good, I suspect you're enjoy right. Enjoy it. Sit back. Relax. Recharge oh. those batteries. You're going to be awesome. I love you so so much. I'm so proud of you. Keep on pedalling. You're the best, Em. Thank you so much. Really helps. Really helps. Well, Em, um, you went wrong. There's the view. And it's going to get better because I've still got to go up further. Hey, girls. How are we doing? Everyone good? Good? Yeah. Oh, you're my favorite. New Mexico. Tour Divide, day 21, New Mexico. Thank you. You bet. Maybe loafing or loitering. I don't know, is this, would this count as loafing? We might be loafing. So just 
just left Cuba. Had, a, had about an hour and a half rest in Cuba. Got a McDonald's. And uh, now heading on the road diversion to France, which is 127 miles, no services, no water, no resupply, and a bloody headwind. So uh, I'm going to camp up somewhere along here tonight and then do the rest tomorrow, but yeah, big time, big time headwind. <sighs> As you can see, big headwind. It's getting serious now. 100 and almost 130 for the day. Still riding. Headwind has been for the last 31 miles and it's not letting up. But on the good news, there's a horse! this one gonna be a slog so check out tonight's luxurious accommodations by the side of the road just got beer bottles and cans and ugh, god knows what and then down here have accommodation very nice Morning, another day, tour divide, another hill, down. Nine miles left on this road to Grants. in grants. So you join me towards the end of day 21, Tour Divide. Um, pretty bad weather early this evening, this afternoon. Pressed on until we started the, the dreaded dirt track to Pie Town, which is notoriously bad when it's wet. Got through the first bit because it was gravel, no peanut butter mud, and this is all pretty dry. So, long story short, we're going to Pie Town tonight. So that will be probably, I reckon, over 160 miles for the day on a backdrop of 2,000, I don't know, 2,290 miles previous. But there is a nice sunset over there. Another couple of 
I was riding in the dark. Hopefully, this road will stay dry. Make hay whilst the sunshine, as they say. But yeah. Day 21, it's all about. This is what it's all about. Late nights, in the cool, trying to avoid peanut butter mud with the sunset. Epic. Uh, he got me. There you go. Peanut butter mud. Horrendous. Sunset's still nice though. Just pushing my bike. <laughs> oh, I got some of that. They are noisy. My word. Not interrupting anything, are we, ladies and gents? Currently got seven litres of water with me. It's pretty mild at the moment, but it's starting to get a bit humid. So um, yeah, all is good. Just approaching the Gila National Forest. This is the forest that was ablaze and we've had to reroute around the edge of it. Uh, significant, significant. I think it was 600,000 acres at one point ablaze. So, uh, not good. What we like, sleeping on a toilet. I've done it at work. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. I can't even see where I'm putting the camera. Oh, okay, well, here's the accommodations. I have got a mat, I've just not got it out yet. <laughs> Luckily, there's no smell of vision. Because it stinks. Oh. Got a nice, oh, missed that one. Yeah. Got a nice porch, porch area here. Got some go windows. And some yeah. Thank God this is here.
we just left the tiny town of, I think you pronounce it Mongolon or Mogolon. Tiny place, two shops. Lovely lady came out, <clears throat> was dot watching us, and uh, gave us water, loads of snacks. Wouldn't accept any money. She just said uh, she wanted to support us, but give us some money anyway. And um, <clears throat> now we're on a big climb <clears throat> up and out of Mongolon, and it's uh, quite scenic. Look at that. But we really need to start getting down from these mountains now and start getting back to some sensible elevation. <clears throat> Get to the finish, which should be tomorrow. Don't know when, but tomorrow. Subject to rain, mud, and all of that good stuff. But yeah, nice views. Join me on Tour Divide, day 24, I think. Um, seems to be in the Serengeti at the moment. And on the plus side, we're off the bloody mountain. Nice to have a little bit of road for a change. Descended from 9,000 feet to about five and a half, six thousand. And now it seems I'm going up again. Garmin says, or oh, head unit says, 34 degrees at the moment. A bit different from the four degree start this morning. But uh, about 150 miles to go. Let's get it done. Well, they're thunder clouds then. Yep. Know what's coming this afternoon. Yay. Until then, keep on pedalling. <sighs> oh, up we go again, pushing my bike. 36, 37 degrees now. Man, it's hot, hot, hot. About to ride into the inevitable. Big cloud burst, and it's going to turn this to absolute peanut butter mud. Oh no joy. Another one behind. Another one over there. So, a summary getting boxed in pretty quick. And this is what happens gets the slightest bit of moisture on it. Oh joy. Here we go again. Here it comes. Got drenched, but luckily on road versus mud, here we go. So, last night, just left Silver City. Had a delightful four course McDonald's. Hmm. Double filet of fish was actually pretty good. Got a pretty good sunset. Um, that sun is my light. Got about 30 miles on road. Then we go off road. And then uh, it's the home stretch to Hachita tomorrow morning. And then the uh, It's not raining. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, 
Oh, mate. Oh, so you know all the fuss is about. Oh, 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 oh,